in words. So, yeah. You, oh, you need one, too. Anybody else? Okay. Maybe a foot issue. Anybody's having a foot issue? So, I just pray. Look here. So I'll pray like this. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we declare whatever is going on. With muscle yeah. issue, tendon, ankle, whatever the thing is, Father. The knuckle, whatever is causing, we declare it. Wholeness to come. And we declare whatever is coming, Father, will be restored back to the original design, Father. Yes, we, re yeah. we rebuke any type of pain, swelling, Father, whatever arthritic thing may be trying to attack them. And, Father, we just declare yeah. healing comes this day, this moment, in the name of Jesus. Yes, Amen. Amen. Okay. All right. <laughs> Good. Uh, one other thing I wanted to do. Um, I'm, I've been... Y'all, I hope I have some grace here. Thanks, dear. Uh, Lord said, I was praying, I said, you know, they, there's things I want to flow in. I'd like to see us flow in, and, and sometimes I just want to see things happen because I know that's the will of God. That's what I'm going to talk about, actually. But uh, Lord, Lord spoke to me and said, the reason why some things don't happen is because people don't put their faith in it. So we're going to put our faith in it. Does anybody here need to hear a word from the Lord? I mean, neat. Okay. Hmm, hmm, hmm. All right. Does anybody have a word to, to, to share right now? Because I'm going to give a word. Hmm, hmm, hmm. All right. Miss Peggy, I seen a valley. And I said, you're walking through this valley, and I see sun above you. And I feel like the Lord's saying, hold on, the valley is not going to stay there forever. The sun has come out, and there will be a point where you can, you can reign the way you've been designed to reign. Make sense? Good? Okay. Come on, pray with me, people. I want to get a word right Lord, I see a dark shadow, and it keeps leak, it keeps lurking around um, the house. And I'm seeing the Lord say, "Stomp your foot and tell it to go away." And it'll go, and it's gone. Amen. Praise God. Anybody else? feel like I need a word. Carl, you need a word? Do you want to get you serious? Okay. I'm just operating in faith here, people. That's all I'm doing. I'm, this is what, what I feel like I can do. Part of my, my calling. Karasi, a coin. And I feel like the Lord says, you're not sure which way you're supposed to go, this side or that side. The Lord said, pick a side. Whatever side you pick is fine, and walk that way. He's with you. Good. Did you need one? Oh, okay. Yeah, true. Yeah, I've heard. I, I, there's a person I listen to all the time, and uh, that's one thing he said. He said he was taught, he was praying about something. He said, "I, I don't want to make the wrong decision." The Lord said, "Just pick a decision. It doesn't matter. Just pick one. It don't care. I'll go with you whichever way you like." I said, "Okay." So I learned something real quick. Sometimes you just got to make a decision. So just pick and go. Absolutely. So. true that's true amen praise god it's good it's good well yeah like like i said we're going to talk about the will of god it's something i have been praying about and so along with with pastors going through um i seen i was praying earlier this week and god began to show me something something that he, we the pastor talked about years ago and he said that there are um principalities in the air that cover a region, counties or maybe multiple counties, states possibly. And I seen him, he, he had 
covered. There was a covering there. And I was like, Lord, what's going on there? That's not even my message, so I'm really flowing now. Um, he, and I said, what's going on there? He said, because people are becoming, he didn't say one person, he just said people are becoming um, ap- apathetic. I think that's the word I want to look. He said, that's not my will. He said, my will is to succeed. So when people have you, if you're feeling a little on the, I don't know what to do, or I'm, I don't have much zest in my life, begin declaring, I want to hear the Lord and break the portal. There's a portal. I seen this years ago in a vision of this church, and this, this light just beamed down on this church. Like I was standing, or like I was in the, in the air, a thousand feet in the air, and this light just broke through the clouds and hit the church and God said, the portal's open. And that's what I feel like I kind of come back to that, that vision I had back years ago was if you're feeling a little nonchalant, how many people know we'd get that? But that's not what God's will is. God's will is for you to be on fire for God. So that's, that's part of it. So... <clears throat> So I'm going to talk about the will. The will of God is mentioned 2,881 times in the Word of God. Uh, 2,392 times in the Old Testament and 489 times in the New Testament. I was doing some research on how many times the will of God is mentioned in the Bible. I didn't know. So go to Google. They know everything. That's what they said. So the legal definition... uh, Let me see here. Let me go back here. Google's definition of will is expressing the future tense or expressing the inevitable events. That's what Google said will is. The legal definition is this. A legal document that states the testers wishes and instructions for managing and distributing their estates after the will is will is usually future tense. That's what the will is. So, so, we, so will is actually two different tenses. Will is a noun. Will is a verb. What's the will of God? How many people know what the will of God is? Well, look, I, I got a lot of work to do today. The will of God is for... Read the Bible. Exactly. Read the Bible. <laughs> read the Bible. That's what's happening. Read the book. No, so we're, we're going to talk about that. That's a, that's a huge question. The will of God. What is the will of God? It's a pretty big question. There's, there's different avenues. There's so many ways you can go with that. I'm not going to be able, I'm going to be honest, to get everything, break down everything in the scriptures. I'm doing what God called me to do and what I'm able to, to function in. So be, be graceful to me as I do this. You have many levels of that, but my level is what, what's the will of God for you? Okay. Each one of us has a calling an anointing, a gifting, determination, and a desire. One through three, only God can tell you and show you what that is. No one else can tell you what that is. The the last last two, which was determination and desire, depend on us. That depends on what we want to do to find the will of God. If you want to find the will, look, what you're going to look for, you're going to find. If If you're not looking for it, you're never going to find it. I don't know what the will of God is. Have you really searched what the will of God is? Have you really searched out? That's my question. And so, that's, that's what we're going to leave you with. That's going to be some homework. Find out what the will of God is for you. And we're going to talk about some more things down the road. Um, but you, you go to Genesis 1, the story of Adam and Eve in the garden. What was the will of God for Adam and Eve? Just to manage the garden. That was, was that the will of God? What happened? Well, they messed it up royally. And they got booted out. As Noah said, you got kicked out of the pool. Time to go, boys and girls. And guess what? They didn't ever come back because an angel with a flaming sword, you're never coming back here. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> so, but the will of God, let me go back to the will of God was for them to stay there perfect peace, and walk with the Lord all day, every day. But they messed it up. As humans, it kind of happens. You know, we're all, we're all guilty to a level of missing the will of God or messing up the will of God. 
And guess what? Here's another thing to remember. Grace will help you get back to the will of God. All right. So you go back, and, and later you go to Genesis 12, 1 through 9. So we're going to go to Genesis 12. We're going to talk about a man named Abram. Are we there? All right. Good job. We met a man named Abram, and he was sent to a land that God, app- that God appointed for him. I think it's Haran was that. And he that's where he went. And he was given all this land. That was the will of God for him to find that. And he succeeded in that. But when he, when he found out the Lord said, you're going to have a, a child, he kind of got out of the will of God real fast. It's that woman. No, don't blame her. You got to decide that. So now we have a huge problem now on this earth, even today, Ishmael and Isaac. So this is now we have a, 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 a pool of power. The Jews and the Gentiles are going to say, we have the right. And other people are going to say, no, where are the right? Well, okay, we're going to have this struggle for a while. But actually, both of them actually have equal heir to that. Because they're both heirs of Abraham. So... Right. <clears throat> if we go down now. We're going to go down to Exodus three, and that's, we're going to talk about Moses. That was just one of the. That was a couple of people talking. Now we're going to talk about Moses. So let's go to Exodus three, verse twelve. Y'all got your Bibles? Y'all can go there. We got it up on the screen too, so you know. I'm going to read from the New American Standard Version. <clears throat> Verse 12. And he, he said, Certainly, I will be with you, and this shall be the sign to you, that, this, that it is I have sent you. And when you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship the God at, the, at this mountain. Then Moses, first, uh, sorry, verse 13. Then Moses said to God, Behold, I am going... To the sons of Israel, I will, I will say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. Now they may say to me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? And God said to Moses, the most famous line, I am that I am, or I am who I am. And he said, Thus you shall say to the sons of Israel, I am has sent me to you. God furthermore said to Moses, This, or thus you shall say to the sons of Israel, the Lord, thy God of, the, of your fathers, of the fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever. This is my memorial name at all generations. So what? So Moses goes to this, to the Egypt, to, into Egypt. See, God's will was for the Israelites to be free. But what did he do? He sent a savior. So, so Moses goes. We know the story. We learned the story. Thank you. All the stories I learned right here. Thank you. Fine job. Fine job. We, and so he goes in there, and he struggles for days to get them Israelites out of there. But finally, it took death. Y'all know the story. It took death for the Pharaoh. And Pharaoh basically said, get out of here. I'm tired of dealing with you all. Get out of here. I'm tired. Move on. Don't come back no more, no more, no more. That's me extra. And so they did. So they left Israel, or they left uh, Egypt, and they go to the promised land, Canaan. Well, we had some problems. That should have been a four-day journey. Four days. Took 40 years. Y'all are the slowest people I ever met in my life. But the will of God was for them to get out of there because God wanted to be their God. But guess what? But so, so Moses, so there, as they go through, they go through the Red Sea. Can you imagine this? Uh, that was a question I was asked one time. Could you imagine standing there at the Red Sea? Come on now, look at this. And see this thing? This has got to be the most phenomenal thing in the entire Bible that I have personally think. Watching this water rise up going, uh, are we supposed to cross that? Are you crazy? But the Lord said, go, so let's go. So like, they went across. How many have seen the movie? We've seen movies. Nothing. That is a phenomenal experience. But the will of God was to free those people. Get them out of Egypt. 
And so that's what they did. So they go, they cross the Red Sea, and they get to this mountain. And so Moses said, I've got to go up to the mountain, and I've got to, I got to talk to God. As he's gone up on the mountain, what happens? They begin to murmur. They begin to cry out. They begin to take a gold and put it in a fire and make a calf. A calf? Really? This is what your desire is? The, the, the God of heaven and earth, and you all want to sit there and make a golden calf? These people, are, I, I don't know. I mean, Lord, these people need a lot of help. But this was the desire of God's will was to free them. So, they, they, so Moses comes back down, and Miss Judy has said this. He's the only person that broke all Ten Commandments at the same time. <laughs> and that's, that's pretty bad. So well, he has to go back up there. Okay, so y'all know the story. He does go back up there and get more. And that's in the Ark of the Covenant. But God's will, my back, but back to my point, God's will was for them to be able to talk to God. These people were so, they had such an orphan heart, they said, we don't want to talk to God. Talk to Moses, we'll talk to Moses, and then we'll just, he's the mediator. Seriously? The God of heaven and earth, and you don't want to talk to him? He wants to talk to you, but... No, I'll talk to Moses. Talk to him. The will, I'm going to talk, this is what I'm talking about. The will of God is to build a relationship with one another. That's the will. You want to know what the will of God is? One, here, you can write this down. One of the wills is to be able to have a conversation with the creator of heaven and earth. And guess what? He's in a good mood. He's in a giving mood. He's always happy to hear from you. Lord Jesus, he's always here. I've never not gone to him and... What do you want now, Jeff? I'd say, he's never done that. I've done that from my side. Lord, what do you want now? But that's me. That's not him. That's, that's one of the things. You can write this down. The will of God is to have a relationship with his people. Okay, we're going to move on. I don't know how long I'm going to go, so... Let's go on to Exodus 17.3. I was listening to Bill Johnson talking on a message one time. He said, he said some people don't use their Bible. They have these tablets. He said, I wish they'd make a tablet where they, you actually heard the pages turning. I said, I get that now. All right. <clears throat> oh, Dan, I already talked about that. But the people thirsted for water, and they grumbled against Moses and said, Why, why now have you brought us out here to Egypt to kill us and our children? And our, li- and our livestock was thirst. They, man, they were really depressed. You brought us out here to kill us? No. No, you've got to trust in the Lord. But they didn't. So we talked about that already. So I kind of got ahead of myself. Um, right. We're going to go on to the next one. Let's go into, um, I think the next one I had. Remember Samson? You all remember Samson? So we're going to go to Judges 13.2. Judges 13.2. This is the story of Samson. It's a great story. He was the original Marvel character. He really was. Before Jesus, there's Samson. He was a bad dude. Okay. Here's the story. Here, we got written proof. Here he was. There was a certain man of Zorah, of the family of the Danites, whose name was Mo- Monana. Mona, I'm not pronouncing these words, so forgive me. His wife was barren, and he, and he had borne no children. Then the angel of the Lord appeared to the woman and said to her, Behold now, you are barren, you are barren and have borne no children, but ye shall conceive and give birth to a son. Can you all stop and think about this? I mean, this is how my brain... Could you imagine you're sitting there having a conversation with your husband, and all of a sudden the angel of the Lord shows up and says, You're barren. You're going to start having children. What are you going to do? I, this is the way my brain processes. Can you imagine this angel just says, Hey, Abigail, I got, a, I got a gift for you, but it's going to be next week. And he's gone. It, yeah, you know, uh, okay. But he was, they weren't scared. Now, therefore, be careful not to drink wine or strong drink nor eat any unclean things. Now, remember, this is in the Old Testament, so they had a lot of rules about what to drink, what to eat, and that sort of thing. Behold, you, have, you shall conceive and give birth to a son, and no razor shall come upon his head, for his boy, 
For the boy shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel from the hands of the Philistines. So listen here. The Philistines were beating up the Israelites pretty bad. And, and basically they said, hey, we need some help here. God said, I got the answer. I'm going to send a man. And what did he do? He sent Samson. And they told him. My next point is going to be, be careful who you tell your secrets to. The will of God is to protect you, so you shan't, you shan't go telling all your secrets to everybody you know. <laughs> be careful who you tell things to. It doesn't mean you have to never tell anybody, but be mindful of what you tell people. It is benefiting you greatly. Not everything that you hear from the Lord, praise, is everybody needs to know. <laughs> because that stuff like that, that cost that man a lot. He cut his hair. Y'all know the story. He cut his hair, and he lost all his strength. Now, the story that I got was, this was an average-looking man. He did not look like the Hulk. If he looked like the Hulk, people would know, oh, there's Samson. But they would look for him. They didn't know what he looked like. He looked an average person. And so God supernaturally gave him strength because he followed the words that were spoken to him at his birth. His mom said, don't eat anything, don't drink anything crazy. And read and pray. That's all you need to do. And he kicked the Philistines. Took us. I mean, look here. He killed an animal and took the took the bone. And he was a bad dude, but he was on God's side. So what happened? Then Delilah came in and messed the whole thing up. Just told you that. Again, be careful. <laughs> be yeah, Be careful what you tell other people about the will of God. See, the will of God was for him was to succeed in destroying the enemies of Israel. So what did he do? He destroyed it, but he told the secrets. I'll write this down. Will, will, one of the wills is, be careful who you tell your, your anointings and callings on. Not everybody needs to know that. Not that you're trying to keep it a secret. Be careful. Mindful. That's part of the will of God. will of God was to succeed for him. Well, he did succeed. The story was, we'll finish the story, Michael, since you're, I know you look curious back there. How did the story end, Jeff? Well, they took him and they, uh, they found out and they put him between two pillars. And he knocked down two pillars. Knocked it down and killed everybody in the, in the house. I mean, everybody died, and he died too. But he destroyed the Philistines. Success. But that was not the will of God. But he did, he did his part. Okay. <clears throat> I'm getting away from my notes, so... We're seeing a pattern developing and learning to God's will. We're seeing that God desires for us to succeed, to overcome, to have a relationship. And that's the thing. We have to, we're looking at some of these men and women that have gone through in, in the Old Testament. The will of God is to protect you and to lead you. It is not just a legal document. Even though you can look at the Bible, that is the will of God. It also is an action. We are to fulfill the will. And like I did earlier, I stepped out in faith, people. In case you are wondering, I stepped out in faith in this. That was the only way God, I feel like God was going to do something, was step out. I, I taught a script. The first time I ever was able to teach here, I said that God, what, the scripture just failed me. Um, I'll remember in a minute. But it takes a faithful person to be able to please God. And the only way we're going to be faithful, what, where, where's our faith at? If we're, is our faith on a level where we just keep it dormant? That it, we're, in, we're in the end time, people. Believe it or not, you can say what you want, and that's fine. I'm not here to argue any of that. But we have situations that we need to go to bat for. And the will of God is for us to succeed. And the only way we're going to do that is operating in faith. Okay? We have to begin operating in faith. So that means that we're going to have to find time each and every day or a week, or whatever time that you can do it, and get alone and operate in faith. And that, room, that, room, that goes back to reading the will. That's the will of God, to succeed and to flow. I'm going to get into something with Pastor here in just a minute. Uh, I'm going to get in here in a minute. And that's just what I heard the Lord tell me about. <clears throat> let's go into the New Testament. And let's look at Simon in Luke 5. Back a, few, back a few years ago, um, the Lord showed me something about Luke 5 that I've never seen before. In Luke 5, I've, you know, you hear the stories, 
Let's go there, Luke 5. Again, if my tablet will react. Okay. Luke 5. We encounter a young man named Simon. <coughs> Jesus called Simon to help him demonstrate his teaching. So, so the scene is Jesus is sitting here teaching on the shore. And he's teaching some people on there. So he calls out to Simon. Now Simon is just getting done for the day. Been out all night. We know the story. And he's working. So he's finishing up wrapping his day up. And Jesus is like, hey man, can we borrow your boat? I'm, I'm kind of wrapping things up, man. I mean, come on, let's, what do you need? I, let's just, just go out there a little ways. I'm going to show you something. So what did he do? So he goes out there. He said, cast your nets out there. Dude, we've been out here fishing all night. There is no fish out there. Are you crazy? But I, I truly believe that Simon said, seeing something in him, a destiny that was foundation found long ago, he seen something in him. Maybe it was the anointing. We don't know. And Simon says, at your word, we'll do it. Cast your nets out. And when Jesus spoke and said, cast your nets out, that's when the fish showed up. Because Jesus spoke that. And the faith, it was Jesus' word and the faith of Simon. When, that, when the nets hit the water and they went down there. You all know how big a fish that was? I mean, the ship was sinking. That's a big load of fish. And the nets were snap, snap, snap. Well, well we got a problem here, people. And he pulled them in there. And people ran. His other co-workers down on the shore come running. Help me out. I need help. And they pulled him in here. And Simon jumped out of the boat and stood at Jesus, or actually kneeled at Jesus' feet. I'm a sinner. I'm going to make you fishermen, Simon. I'm going to make you fishermen. And there's a couple things that jump out for me. See, Jesus always calls us to things that we're associated, that we know how to do. He's not going to call me to go to Africa when I have nothing to do with Africa. He's not going to call me to go to another state. He's not going to call me to go, here, I need you to learn HR and go do HR stuff. That is not what I do. So Jesus mixes your calling and the things that you are quite well adversed in. As a truck driver, he's going to match something you can do as a truck driver, as a teacher, or what have you. That's what he's going to do. So he took Simon, something he was professional at, and he made him a part of that. One of the things that, that I never realized about Luke 5 was that Jesus was so excited about the faith of Simon. This is before Peter. That he blessed him so much. Then he actually caught those fish and brought them in now. He had something to sell and he had debt. So he had to be able to... He fulfilled his debt. And now he had a mandate. The will of God was for Simon... Jesus needed Simon. If I can think about that. Jesus needed Simon. So he goes to Simon. Now I don't know if he, I'm guessing he was the first one that Jesus went to. Maybe not. I don't know if there was an order. But we know that probably was the first order. Maybe I haven't read that part. But, but Jesus went and found Simon. And he had a brother. And they, I mean, if you notice, brothers are really common in the New Testament. He goes and finds families and brings them in. Hi, family. Hi, family. He brings them all in here, and he gives, us an, he gives an anointing. Now, Simon was a wild card. Now, we, now, you can go into Peter. He was a wild card. This is the guy that cut off a, a guy's ear when Jesus was going to be taken in. Put your sword down, Simon. He was a, he just a wild card. But Jesus knew. And he actually said, Simon, you all remember this? Or actually, Peter, he said, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. He was critical to get and Andrew and James and John the sons of thunder how many of y'all watched The Chosen I know you guys have been watching that but I've enjoyed that if you watch that it's really good have you got to season 3 yet yeah season 3 yeah, they're going to do season 4 next year it's coming out <laughs> it's, okay, it's okay sorry sidetracked it's really good um, but it just to see Jesus needing those people Cause you, could you imagine Jesus doing all this by himself he could not do it. He needed a group of people to come with him. That was the will of God 
For, that was a calling. The pastor used to say this. There was something that he said something that Simon knew that in Jesus. Have you ever think about this? Jesus was the type of person when you saw him, there was something different about him. You can just encounter him. You don't know what it is. Now, I, I, I watch a particular program, and some people, the word's going to say, there's something different. But we as Christians, you know what we call that? The anointing. That's the, the anointing on him. You can feel it. When you walk into a room, how many people walked into a room and felt something on a person? You know to say, person, that's the anointing of God. They can only do it. Fraser right here is the only person who can do what he does. I mean that. I don't mean that in a boastful way. I mean, he's the only person who can do that. I would to break that down. In the entire world, in the entire galaxy, in all creation, there's only been one person that can do what he does. One person. And Laura Howard, same way. And Miss Judy. Jennifer. There's only one person that could do it. And you've been given it. That's a, that's a phenomenal thing to think about. That all you can, all that you can see all the people, that they can do a job better. Like that guitar player is better. Or better singers, or better whatever. But there's only one you. That's, it's, it's a phen- is that not phenomenal to think that your brain will just... Like spin in the mud. You don't understand your traction. You're just you're one of you. And the will of God is for you to succeed and to have a relationship. That's the will of God. So let's go on to... Um, yeah, let's go on to, to uh, Matthew 9, 14. We're moving on quickly. Matthew 9, 14. Uh, oh, I'm reading that. Oh, sorry. I'm reading that in the amplified version. I'm sorry. Jen, you uh, you provoked me to look at other other uh, translations of the Bible. Jennifer can do it. I can't do. It's good. No, I liked it. I liked it. <laughs> Thanks, Jen. Appreciate it. <laughs> Jen did it, Chris. She, she, no, I'm not. I'm just kidding. Verse, uh, we're going to Matthew 9, chapter 9, verse... What did I say? Oh, I'm sorry, chapter 6. I told you the wrong one, people. My bad. I have totally messed up here. I... Okay. I wrote... Chapter 6, verse 9. Probably the most uh, well-known, documented prayer is this. Pray then this way. Our Father, who art in heaven, actually I'm going to read it, Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What's the will of God? It's in heaven. If he wants you to be saved and sanctified and filled and healed in heaven, he wants that here. We've heard this. Bill Johnson does a phenomenal job on that. Give us this day our daily bread. So this is something we come to daily. We should expect something daily. I, I, I heard the word last... No, 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 you don't need yesterday's word. You need today's word. You don't need last week's word. It was a good word. Don't give me the wrong impression. It was a good word. But I need today's word. It's a brand new day. We just talked about that. Today is the day the Lord has made. Forgive us our debts as we have forgiven our debtors, letting go of both the wrong and the resentment. That can be very powerful. It's a choice. When you have an, when you have an understanding that God desires to have you flow in the way God wants you to flow, you begin to realize the emotional baggage that has been carried on for so many years, months, decades, whatever the thing is, you fill in that time frame. You realize God does not want... That, that is so... It subtracts away from the calling of God. And when you stand and you're, when you're fu- fully functioning in the call of God, the anointing of God is flowing, and you begin to realize those things from that hurt don't matter anymore. I don't care. I'm going to share something. I'm going to stop right there for a minute. <clears throat> My brother Joe died in February. And I prayed this prayer. And I'm actually going to go talk to it a little bit. He said, my peace I leave with you. My peace I leave with you. He said, I'm going to send a comforter. One thing I I have to, to think about is if we're not comforted, are we relying on the Holy Spirit? 
Amen, Jeff. That's good. That's, that's good. Amen. That if you're not if you're not comforted, you're not relying on the Holy Spirit. That's a good message. I mean, it's funny, but it's true. Are we not? Who's not comforted? We're not relying on the Holy Spirit. But the whole thing, and I, and I, I'm not going to go down this road. But the thing was, I asked myself. I seen my family. They they were in a, an emotional state, and I said to myself, I don't. I don't feel that. And the Lord spoke to me this week, J.L., this week. He said, because you called on peace, and peace showed up, and it stayed with you the entire time. That's why you didn't have that reaction. Light bulb went off. Ding! Okay, you asked for peace, peace showed up. What? I got what I asked for. I mean, this is a real hard revelation. Ask and you shall receive. Knock and the door shall be open. Seek and you will find. I want the peace of God. I don't want to be contaminated with all these other emotions when going through this thing. I miss him. I'm mad at him. He shouldn't have died. Joe, you shouldn't have died. I'm just saying. But we're moving on. <clears throat> Verse 18. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Verse 14. For if you forgive others of their trespasses, their reckless and willful sins, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. This is a choice. And I, and I say something to, to my family. I said, things that we do are a choice. What do you want to do? I want to live in the will of God. I want to live with peace. I want to do the things God called me to do. I don't have time to sit there and hold on to this other stuff. If you want peace and you ask for peace, you should expect peace. That's the will of God. You want, what, are you, what are you looking for? Then request it. In the army, you have to request things. You need a new rifle. You need whatever. I need more ammunition. You request I need a new uniform. You don't expect to request a uniform and get a handgun. I got the wrong thing, man. You get a Jeep instead of a whatever, a tray of food. Here, we have to, I, I'm hungry. I need something to eat. A Jeep ain't going to benefit me. I can go over to McDonald's and get something. But you see, you pray what you need to pray. I want peace. Through that time, I wanted peace. Guess what? Peace showed up. Peace is a real friend. Have you ever noticed this? You talked about this. Peace is a real good friend. When, uh, there's a scripture, that I, and, I, and I begin reading this, and this is something I might talk about down the road, was peace that surpasses all understanding. Can you stop? That was great. Put the brakes on. Peace that surpasses all understanding. When you operate in peace, things that you want to understand immediately go away. You don't need to understand why this didn't work, that person did that, whatever. I'm in peace. Stay right there. All those things go away. You're actually operating on a supernatural level that other people have to, they try to get to. I don't have any peace. Have you asked the Lord for peace? And declare and desire, I want peace. The peace of God is the will of God in your life. That's the will of God. So we're going to go to 3 John 1, 2 through 4. So we can, we can quote that one almost by heart, but we're going to go ahead and read it just for clarifications. I think I wrote that down. 3 John 2. Okay. I'm going to read this. I'm reading all this one out of the Amplified too. Beloved, I pray that every way you may succeed and prosper and be in good health physically, just as I know your soul prospers spiritually. For I was greatly pleased when some of the brothers came from time to time and testified to your faithfulness to the truth of the gospel message. That is, how you are walking in truth. I have no greater joy than this, to hear that my spiritual children are leaving their lives, li I'm sorry, living their lives in the truth. That right there. Do you want to know if, if God's will to heal? The answer is yes. That's what I was going to talk about. I was praying about this. Str I mean, I've been struggling with everything that's going on. It's God. And God said, Jeff, the, the will of God is to heal him. That's the will of God. You breathe in, the will of God is to heal. That's the will of God. Simple, Lord. Well, yeah, it's pretty simple. That's the will of God. No, now you're, the question is, why this? Why I, That I don't have the answer to. 
but we're going to declare and stand on the word of God and say, you said that he was going to be healed. He's going to be healed. I'm not taking no for an answer. I don't care what he says, what he does, he's going to be healed. That's me. Now, now maybe there's other objections. Okay, this is where I'm standing at. I'm, love me, please love me from afar. And let, give me some grace. No, my heart is to love what's going on here. Does everybody understand that? It's not to stir anything up. That is not my heart. But I'm just reading. This is what, this is what I read. That's the will of God. Not just this situation, but in every situation. I'm going through the most... The will of God is to succeed. I don't know what the will of God is. Well, I would suggest finding... Go to Google and type in and see what scriptures match up. I don't know your scripture. I don't know what it is you're going through. Job. Well, we're going to talk about that in a minute. Is the will of God to have a job? The answer is yes. In this case you're wondering. In this case you're wondering. I, we're going to get there in just a minute. John 10.10. 10. All right. How am I doing, guys? John 10.10. 10. We're doing this in the Amplified also. The thief comes only to, to, in order to steal and to kill and destroy. I come, I came that you may have life and have it in abundance to the, to the full Till it overflows. Now, let me ask you a question. Have you ever been in life and everything's going okay? Yeah, everything's going okay. The thief, the thief hasn't shown up yet. The destroyer had to come in. Death is not coming knocking at your door. There's a reason for that. But when death and, and the thief and the destroyer comes, we got a problem. We need to go to bat. We need to start digging into the will of God. The will of God is for you to succeed. The will of God is for you to overcome. This actually, if you, go further, if you go further up in the chapter, this is actually talking about being a shepherd. John 10.10 10 talks about being a good shepherd. This is where this comes from. In the, the flock. And some people walk away. This is where this comes from. Okay. We're going to go to Luke 19. I know I'm giving a lot of scriptures today. Luke 19, verse 10. I was reading this. Yeah, this, this actually scripture just came. It was, came by itself, but I thought, know that it's practical. The Son of Man has come to seek and to save the lost. Your desire, God's will for you not to be lost. If you've cried out, if you're crying out, if you, did, if you down the road say, cry out, I'm lost, the answer is in here. Please, 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 I urge you, if you're having those moments, make a phone call. Find somebody in this room. Find somebody you know you can trust and just call them. I need, I need a little help. Okay? I, I can't tell you who to call. Miss Debbie's always a good one to call. No, she's not. No. I don't know. No, no. I say you can call me, but you know. But listen, the thing is, but you need to get out there and find out. I'm going through struggle. You know, actually half the battle is knowing that you're going through an issue and you're not handling it well. That's half the battle. I know that's from the transformer. Knowing is half the battle. Hey, that's true. That was a true statement. Knowing is half the battle. G.I. Joe. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, I'm from the 80s, y'all, so. I know. It's all right. And we're going to go to Matthew 5, verse 43 through 45. Matthew 5. I don't know that I'm going to run a long, a more long here. Matthew 5. Y'all get, are you all doing all right out there? No, Jeff, we're doing horrible. Okay. Matthew 5, 43. All right, here we go. You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor, fellow man, and hate your enemies. I mean, is it, uh, Let's go back to the... Which version you got, Cassandra? No, that's good. Okay, let's go there. That's fine. Verse 43. Okay, hang on a second. Let me get there. I was in a different version. <clears throat> you have heard it that it, is said, that, that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemies. 
But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who per- persecute you so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. For he causes the sun to rise on the evil and the good and sends the rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. Uh, yes, that's where I was going to stop. Good. I didn't mark it down here. Okay. The will of God is for you to be able to be successful. We don't, we're not supposed to hate anybody. Talk about the will. It doesn't mean that you have to uh, love everything that everybody's doing. There's a, this month has been set aside for you all know. We're not going to go down there. doesn't mean you hate those people. When we should love them, really, they, they need our, they Listen, those people need our love more than anything in the world. Amen, Jeff. That's good. Yeah, I thought it was good myself. Those people need our love. We don't like what they're doing. You know, the, the thing, if you look at those, and if you look at that group of people, when they hear that we're Christians or churchgoers, they immediately think they're on the defense. Why? We've not done anything to them. We don't agree with what you're doing, but I can still love the person. That's the will of God, is to love each and every person. To, to, to love them, to, to who that spitefully use you. And, uh, okay. So, that's, uh, yeah, okay. We're going to go over here. We're almost done, guys. Is it the will of God to heal, to prosper? Is it the will of God to have a family, to be married, to have a job, to go to church, to be saved. So we've covered actually the first two. The will of God is to heal. So what, what is the will of God? Is the will of God to have a family? Yes, it is. He wants you to have an offering. Raise up godly children. That's God's will. Wonder. doesn't mean that you, you should feel a certain way just because you don't have children. <clears throat> Let's go to Second Thessalonians 3.10 2 Thessalonians did I get it right? 2 Thessalonians 3.10 Am I going too long guys? Don't know? Okay <clears throat> Alright For even when, when we were with you, you we used to give you this order If anyone is, is not willing to work then he shall not eat either for we hear that some among, uh, among you leading an undisciplined life, doing no work at all, but acting like busybodies. Now such persons are, com- are commanded and exhorted in the Lord Jesus Christ to work in quiet fashion and eat their own bread. You're looking at me crazy. That's the will of God, to have a job. That's the will of God. I don't feel like, I don't care if you feel like it or not, get up and do something. Find something to do. Pastor used to say, no work, eat, no eat, eat. It's actually in the Bible. I did just said it. No work, no eat. So go to work. I'm just ta- I, these are a few things that come to my mind when the will of God is. Let's talk about this. Um, go to church. So let's go to Hebrews 10.23. 10, Hebrews 10.23. That's probably a, a favored. All right. We're getting close to being done, y'all. 10.23. All right. Here we go. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stimulate one another to love and good deeds. Verse 4. Let's go to verse 24. And let us consider how to stimulate one another to love and to good deeds. Verse 25. Not forsaking our own assembling together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another in all those all the more as you see the day drawing near. It basically is saying this. As the days come to an end, we need to find ourselves gathered together more. Just, that's just it. Y'all take that and marinate on that. And in First uh, First Timothy 2, 1. How long have I been going? 49 minutes? Goodness gracious. Okay. I'm going to make this my last one. Okay, sorry, y'all. I did not expect to go this long. I think my... Anyways. Uh, verse 1 through 8. All 
All right, this is it. For all then, I urge that the entries and prayers, petitions, and thanksgiving be made on behalf of all men, for kings and all who are in authority, so that we may lead a tranquil and quiet life in, in godliness and in dignity, this good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of truth. Let's read that again, verse 3. This is the good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desire all men and women and children to be saved and to come to the knowledge of truth. Is it the will of God to be saved? It is. We just read it in Second Tim- or First Timothy. <clears throat> so I'm going to read. I'm going to read this last, and then I'll be done. So a will is not just a document, but is an action and desire, or a verb and a noun. God wants you well, but wants you. I'm sorry. God wants you well but wants you excellent. He doesn't just want you well, he wants you excellent. Only in God's will will you, will you understand his ways, and your ways will, will in submission for life. Your ways will is a submission for life. Will has a power over everything. Willpower, self-will, and God's will. So, if you wonder what the will of God is, I hope that I've encouraged you to look for that will and to know that God has a purpose and plan for what you need to do. I've not said everything I wanted to say, but I'm going to call the quits. Thank you all.